All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 6. Okay, now let me show you something wild here at verse 9. Okay, so you thought this was wild, right? All right, remember Jesus said this. By the way, all these are just the beginning of sorrows. Remember Jesus said that at Matthew 24? So then, that's the first half of the tribulation that we cover here. What's going to happen here? Now let's cover the fifth seal. Okay, then what does worse mean, Pastor? How worse is it going to be? Oh, <laughs> let me show you what worse is. You ready? And when he had opened the fifth seal, when the fifth seal is unlocked, I saw under the altar. Okay, underneath this altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Okay, what is this altar? Look at Revelation chapter 11. That's the altar at Jerusalem. Look at Revelation chapter 11. That's the literal altar in Jerusalem. Now you might say, wait a minute, Pastor. Then the Jews starting those animal sacrifices, the third temple and the Sanhedrin setting up and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's opening the door for this one, right? You're absolutely right. There has to be an altar and, and that sacrifice built up at Jerusalem. That will happen at the tribulation. So if you see that thing set up, then you're like, we're, all, we're there. We're getting there. Look at Revelation chapter 11. Look at verse 1. Notice this is a literal Jerusalem temple that God's talking about. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the what? Temple of God. That's the temple of God. What is the temple of God when you read throughout your Bible? That's Jerusalem. But keep reading. And the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the who? Well, that's plain. That's an earthly temple. What is God's earthly temple when you read throughout your Bible? That's Jerusalem. But it is even more plain when you keep reading. And the what? Holy city. See, that's definitely Jerusalem. Shall they tread underfoot forty and two months? So look at that. The Gentiles, the, anti the United Nations, they're going to take control. Uh, I'm trying to, f I'm running out of colors. Okay. So they're going to take control over the temple in Jerusalem. That's what's going to happen. And within this Jerusalem temple, what they are going to do is that the Antichrist, he's going to sit and proclaim that he is God. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. He's going to take over the Jerusalem temple. And there's going to be an altar. Why does the Antichrist do that? Total blasphemy against God where I am God, you offer sacrifice to worship me. Look at, oh, did I say first? Second Thessalonians, excuse me. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Look what the Antichrist will do. <clears throat> We'll look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Notice he's going to go inside the temple. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that there is the Antichrist, man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is what? Worship. See, he's going to take that temple worship for himself. So that he as God, look at this, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See, he's going to take God's worship service at Jerusalem. And he's going to say, worship me. Notice that this happens after the seals when we go back to Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. <clears throat> Look at Matthew chapter 24. Notice this happens after the seals. So you'll see full monstrosity, full demon possession, full evil, and terror and horror right after this. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24. Okay, now I don't have to repeat it, but re verse 4, 5, 6, 7, that was the first seals, right? The four horsemen, remember that? And notice that is what? Verse 8, the beginning of sorrows. Okay, 
Then look at verse 15. When he therefore shall see the what? Abomination of desolation. That's something really evil. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the where? Holy place. Remember what the Bible says? That in the holy temple of God, the Antichrist is going to sit on it. So notice this happens after the seals. After the beginning of sorrows. Which is why it seems like that the tribulation could be seven years. It could be longer like that. Let's look at uh, verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now the Jews have to run away. Why? Look at verse 17, 18, 19, 20. I don't have to read that. But notice right here, everyone is running for their lives. See, so notice right here, there is some form of persecution going on here. Every one of the saints are running for their lives. And notice who is concentrated right here. It's Jews, right? Earlier, we saw that the Jews, they made that covenant with the Antichrist, and they try to make a covenant with hell and death. Remember that? But now notice right here what's going on is that now the Jews are running for their life. Something happened over here. Well, Jesus mentioned in Matthew 24, when the Antichrist stands in the holy place, it's spoken of by who? Daniel the prophet. So Daniel the prophet called this the abomination of desolation. Let's see what Daniel says. Go to Daniel 9. Daniel chapter 9. Let's see what he says. Daniel chapter 9, and then we'll read verse 27. Daniel 9, and then we'll read verse 27. Notice it talks about that covenant that's made with the Antichrist, and then look what happens in the middle, in the middle. Now, for some of you who don't know, just real quick, some of you who have watched my beginner's discipleship videos on the tribulation, I already explained how the calculation of seven years work, so I'm not going to do it again. But basically, if you look up a day to God, he could represent that as one year. So then Daniel's 70th week said it's going to be one week. So that means seven days, right? And remember, if one day equals one year, then that would equal seven years, see? So that's why we see seven years of tribulation. Now notice what happens in the middle of the seven years. See, the middle of the tribulation. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. So the Antichrist makes that covenant with the Jews for that seven years, but something happened in the middle. And in the midst of the week, he shall, look at this, cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. That matches with Matthew 24. That abomination of desolation is after this beginning of sorrows. And that means this, this part is the total nightmare here. Everyone's going to be running for their lives. Why? What is the Antichrist doing? Well, we saw right here he had an altar set up. Go back to Revelation 6. He had an altar set up. And then you'll notice right here that the Bible talks about the souls right here, right? It talks about the souls who are underneath the altar, the Bible says. Souls, that means they already died then. Look at Revelation chapter 6. Look what the Bible says right here concerning about the souls under the altar. I saw under the altar the souls, that means they already died, that were what? Slain. See, they, they did die. Remember, they were running for their lives, right? Why? Now we know. Because the Antichrist is doing a, a holocaust. He is doing a holocaust un, unlike what Adolf Hitler did. He's going to do something bigger than what Adolf Hitler did. Slain for the word of God. They were slain for God's word and for the testimony which they held. They also died for having a testimony before the Lord. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? So they're praying to the Lord. And they're crying, what? Lord, how long will it take? Holy and true, 
Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? These souls are crying out, hey, we died, we were killed by these people who dwelt on the earth. Our blood was shed. Lord, how long will it take? Will you not judge it? So that's interesting. Notice the location where their blood cried out was under the altar. It's the location where the altar is. That means they're going to be killed where this altar is. That's interesting. Look at Abel. The Bible says, to, when God spoke to Cain, the blood of your brother cries from the ground. Yeah. So at that location where he was killed, where his blood was spilled, we know that's where Abel died at. And if we take it that way, that makes sense with verse 10 when it says the blood crying out from where the altar is, that means that's where they were killed, like Abel. Oh, wow, yeah. See that? You compare scripture with scripture. But here's another thing that's more interesting. It says souls under the altar, right? So a lot of people will confuse this with the temple and altar up in heaven. But that's not true. They forgot Revelation 11. There's, an, there's a temple right here on the earth that the Antichrist is going to take over. By the way, it also mentions that these souls are where? In the vicinity where they're slain is obviously going to be at... God's temple in Jerusalem, not up in heaven. That's where their blood's going to cry out, see? So it makes more sense that they're slain at this locality here. Wow, this is horrifying. Yeah, so what's going to happen is that here comes this Antichrist coming down with two fingers like this, and then he's going to come down and say, peace be on you, but what he means is death, death. Remember what this means? I taught you that. It didn't mean peace, it meant death. He's coming down like the bowman, remember? That bowman coming down, and he's going to strike them. He's going to cause death upon them. Peace be on you. But he's not coming as a man of peace. He's coming down for the sake of peace. We have to wipe you all out. You are the fundamentalist extremists. You are the terrorists. You are the hate group we were warned about. And then he's going to slaughter them. Now think about this. If the, what happens if you're killed by the altar? Huh. Look at the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 1. How are you killed by the altar? See, you don't have to be Einstein and geniuses. Any person with common sense can guess. What's going to happen? He's going to have these people offered up as human sacrifices. He's going, because he has to be worshipped. And he's going to slay them on the altar. You ever wonder why the book of Daniel mentioned about the sacrifice and oblation to cease? Why? It's not going to be animal sacrifices. It's going to be humans. See, God's sacrifice system is not going to be ongoing that time. It's going to be Satan's own sacrifice. Look how you, look how you are slain at the altar. This is how you die. Notice that verse 4, And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest and Aaron's son, and shall bring the what? Blood. And sprinkle the what? Blood round about upon the altar. Remember Revelation 6? By the altar what? Their blood's crying out. Look at verse 6. And he shall what? Flay the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. Wow. Uh, look at verse 12. And he shall cut it into his pieces with his what? Head and his fat. Notice that the head is cough, uh, cut off and then the body parts are dismembered as well. Is it true they'll be beheaded? Look at Revelation 20. On the altar are these saints, their heads chopped off? Yes. Look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Just like the animals who lost their heads, their heads chopped off at the altar, that's what's going to happen to these saints. Verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them, remember those souls under the altar who cried out? That were what? beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. 
Remember the souls under the altar slain for the word of God? This matches up. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image. See that? They're not worshipping him. Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. Look at right here. Because they, they're not going to receive that mark of the beast on their head, the Antichrist says, well, I'm going to use your head in one way or the other. Chop off his head then. Offer as a sacrifice worshipping me. You don't want to worship me? You're going to worship me one way or the other. Nightmare. And flaying them as well. That's a nightmare. That's why all these Jews are running away. You would too, right? Here's another thing. What do you do with sacrifices on the altar? What do the priests do? They eat them. You might say, no, I don't believe it. Well, go to the book of Isaiah. Go to the book of Isaiah. I don't believe it. No, I would believe it. You know why? You might say, why? Because what's going, you forgot this horseman here. When you're starving to death, man, and you want something to eat, and it is, uh, and if you look, and if you look throughout our society, it does happen, you will resort to cannibalism. You will resort to eating human flesh. And trust me, when you eat that human flesh, it's going to taste really good. I've heard some horror stuff. You know, I don't know where they heard this from. They probably heard it from a cannibal or something. I don't know where they heard it from. But they said that uh, human flesh actually tastes really good. So believe it or not, that's what I've heard. So when you think about it, when they're, I mean, they want, good, they want some good meat, man. They want good meat. They're starving to death. And when they eat that, when they taste that human flesh, their growling stomachs is going to feel so satisfied. And not only that, if human flesh is as good as they say, it's going to taste so good that they can't help it but eat more. Yeah. And that's how their beloved Savior rescues their world from all the slaughter and the onslaught, tribulation, and hell on earth. I am your savior. Obama says, Obama, save us, rescue us from this economy falling apart. We're starving to death. Eat each other. Yeah. Yep. Now, I'm not saying Obama is the Antichrist, but what I'm bringing up is a current event example what people will follow. They really look up to him as the savior who will rescue them from their economy. If they think about that way, with Obama, imagine with the Antichrist, yes. who's the greatest deceiver. Yeah. Come on. So you, you act all skeptical, oh, I don't think that will happen. You, you don't pay attention to current events, do you? Do you see these people looking up to some kind of savior figure? Especially now that Trump became president, do you, do you not really believe that those liberals and Democrats are really holding on to someone rescue us, some savior figure to become president of the United States? You really don't look at current events, do you? People don't. People don't look. People don't look. Look at Isaiah chapter 6. And then we'll read verse 13. Isaiah chapter 6 and then we'll read verse 13. Now notice that in verse 11, it talks about the nation of Israel, the city's gone. Verse 11, then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. So notice right here that Israel is going to be desolate without men, inhabitants. Well, obviously that did not happen, and it's going to happen until the tribulation. Until the tribulation, then we really see the house is all desolate and men removed. But notice verse 13, but yet in it, mm -hmm. so the Israel's inhabitants are wiped out. Well, how many is going to survive? But yet in it shall be a tenth and it shall return and shall be what? Eaten. Eaten. This is referring to the people at verse 11 and 12. This is the people of Israel, Jews. So a tenth of it are eaten. Well, ain't literal. Well, read the next part. As a tail tree and as an oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the what? Substance, substance thereof. Wow. It's talking about literal eating here. As if you're eating some part uh, of your own diet and food. That's what it's talking about, shall be the substance. They're eating. 
Wow, wow, wow. How about that? All right, go back to Revelation chapter 6. Now it makes sense why these are just the beginning of sorrows. Somebody is going to chase after you if you're in this tribulation time. Somebody's going to chase after you with a fork and a knife yeah, dude, say, I want to eat you. Now, you don't think you're going to get freaked out after that? Imagine you're in a room. You know what the Bible says? Fathers and... Uh, Fathers are going to turn against their children, children against their fathers, brothers turning against sisters. Imagine sitting in a room with your family, starving to death, looking at you with hungry eyes, knowing that you didn't take the mark, and you don't think that you're not going to be afraid after that? Yeah. Wow. wow. Terror, man. Yeah. And now it makes sense. This is just the beginning of sorrows. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Come over here. The mother that you thought really loved you Daddy who raised you and then really loved you. And then your brother and sister who you always had a good time with. And then your best friend who was your best friend of the best friend. He's homosexual, but he's my best friend, you know, like that. <laughs> and these people are going to look at you kind of funny with a fork and a knife and mouth drooling. And they know you're, you're not following the Antichrist system. That you believe in Jesus. You believe in God. You believe in the Bible. What do you think they're going to do to you? You think you feel safe after that when you're in a world where everyone has the mark and then you don't? And then you don't think that you're not going to be scared and terrified? Get saved. Get saved, man. Yeah. Now, if you want to... Uh, if you want to rock hard at Tempe, Arizona and say, we're going to go through the tribulation. I want the tribulation. More power to you, man. You guys, man, you guys are on crack, man. All right, go to Revelation 6. Sometimes people can be so high on crack that they got nothing better to do than to just troll churches, you know, and then start a ruckus and cause fights. Yeah. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 6. So we see right here that in Revelation chapter 6 that this is going to be a nightmare. There's going to be cannibalism, bloodshed, Total, abom it's truly abomination, as the Bible called it. Abomination of desolation. It's interesting, Isaiah mentioned about desolate and wasted at Isaiah chapter 6, yeah. concerning about the Jews gone. Daniel called it abomination of desolation and how it tied to the sacrifice, sacrifice oblation to cease. See, these are all connected here. All right, so no kidding, verse 10, you would be crying that too. Lord, will you avenge my blood? How long? 